Yes, we are back. All right. You guys are definitely going to love this medical-themed episode. So we have a guest, and he's an integrative oncologist. You were trained at Harvard for oncology. But on top of that, you also went to Stanford and UCLA Medical School for acupuncture. So you were also a former Navy commander, and you treated cancer patients with traditional and complementary therapies. So I am really curious to hear about these, and I think they can maybe benefit the lives of all of us. So why don't we put our hands together for Dr. Lewinda. Thank you. Thanks for having me. All right. I always thought Dr. Dre would be my first doctor interview, but he sold out. He's rich. Sorry. He's got even probably more money than you as a doctor, so sorry. Very likely. Um, okay, so you're single and you've got a pickup line um, that talks about how you blog, but why don't you tell them you're a doctor? Yeah, so you're right, exactly. Being single doesn't help when girls say it to me, like, so what do you do for fun? I'm like, well, um, I blog, and that doesn't go over too well, so uh, yeah, so. Right, because they're imagining being away from you and you're quietly typing. Yeah. It's just not romantic. It's not it's, sexy, yeah. Okay. yeah. Um, it is. Oh. <laughs> Who said that? Oh, right, several cool. people. That Thanks. was weird. <laughs> okay, so that what that is something women think because you cool. saw it, it was not Thank just you. like one that was like had that. Okay. <laughs> All right. <laughs> so what's integrative oncology? So uh, that's a combination of conventional cancer treatment that everybody knows, like radiation, which is what I do, uh, surgery, chemotherapy, uh, combined with complementary therapies. For example, acupuncture, herbal medicine, meditation, things like that. As, uh, along with uh, lifestyle changes, so for example, counseling on nutrition, anti-cancer nutrition, uh, exercise, stress reduction, avoiding toxins. You pull all this together, it's sort of the holistic way to treat patients with cancer, many different chronic diseases. All right, and that's one of the reasons that this is interesting that you got booked this week was because I, I dealt with a lot of cancer in my family. My mom died from it a little while ago, and I, I always hated how it was so messy, like how it was like sort of like you felt no control you would go, I would watch her go under these radiation treatments where they're like, they're trying to get the general area, but you're basically destroying the body. So um, will you explain like when you went through UCLA and you were thinking about things like acupuncture and meditation, like how were you fitting this in and like why did you find it valuable to, to combine? So, I mean, initially uh, I thought acupuncture was a placebo. Uh, that's sort of the training that I got from, you know, sort of the conventional medical training background that I have. And so I decided to go into acupuncture to really do some research to actually figure out if it works or not. Uh, and basically, so I went through this program and didn't tell anybody that I was basically trying to de design research studies to disprove it, uh, sort of like the Trojan horse in the program. And only did I find out while I was in the program that uh, this stuff works really well. And since then, there have been thousands of patients that I've treated uh, for a variety of different conditions, and it's just incredibly effective. Uh, you look at the research in very, very rigorously reviewed peer-reviewed journals, and there's uh, you know fantastic research on acupuncture. Um, likewise, for meditation, for exercise, and a variety of different other complementary therapies that that people can use to help change health outcomes. And so I thought, well, maybe if you combine all of these things together, maybe patients will hopefully do better through cancer treatment. And there's this movement out there called integrative medicine, uh, which I sort of jumped on the coattails of. And uh, we have actually a subspecialty of that, of integrative oncology. So there's actually a Society for Integrative Oncology, and there's a, there's a few other different organizations that do uh, promote this sort of thing academically. And I jumped on that, and I thought that this is definitely the, the way, the future of uh, treating cancer patients. Okay, because I definitely, um, in all honesty, I get sort of skeptical when I hear some of the things too, because yeah. um, I just don't hear it from every doctor. So I also think, though, that it's, I, it could be likely that every doctor thinks the same way and they don't explore new things. So um, without, you know, without like actually saying whether it's great or not, like where um, did you figure out that this was something that you wanted to like actually prescribe to patients? And are you, I, I, we talked earlier, so you'd be willing to share those links so I could put them under the YouTube video. So if you guys want to actually just read what he read that made him have that decision. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. So I mean, if if you're looking for information on research for justification of you know, for example, acupuncture, you know, the um, there, there's a variety of state organizations that that basically have uh, you know great links that I can that I'll definitely link to. Uh, the National Institutes of Health, World Health Organization, they also have great links for a lot of these things. And what I'm specifically picking are things that are evidence informed. I mean, these yeah, are really research-based things. I'm right, not just. Right. Because you Google like. 
you know, is Viagra good? And it's like, right. yeah. And then it's like, is Viagra bad? And it's like, oh, yeah. yeah. Like, I'm like, wait, it can't be yes both ways. Right. No, Viagra's good. Yeah. Oh. oh. <laughs> Not that I know, personally, but, you know, say, I do prescribe anything it. You, right. Any medicine you right. have. Yeah. Yeah. These guys. Yeah. Those people. Yeah. <laughs> They've got problems. Seriously. Get them some Viagra. Yeah. Okay. That one, um, that one in the back. Yeah. Okay. So, but, so what are the resources again that you recommend for anybody that's trying to look up things and make their own decisions? What I would do specifically is because I spend all of my time doing this, um, I'm really obsessed about it. Is actually to go to my website, which is integrativeoncology-essentials.com, and you'll find a ton of information there. It's all you know the latest information on research studies that have come out. Um, basically looking at all the different topics of integrative oncology and integrative medicine. So if you just do integrativeoncology-essentials.com, you'll find pretty much everything. Gotcha. Okay, well, so, and you're dealing with these people that have a very scary thing happening to them. And I was curious, what have you learned from working with so many people who are going up against likely the biggest challenge in their life? Like, what is the kind of entrepreneurial sub-message that maybe we could share with everybody? I think the big deal is empowering your patients. You know, right now, you know, for, for the most part, patients will come, they'll see me in clinic, uh, they'll expect me to be like most other doctors, which is basically to, you know, uh, essentially, this is what you're going to do, we're going to do this to you, and th this is your option. Uh, but if you give patients a variety of things that they can do on their own, empower them, uh, for example, with a variety of lifestyle changes or complementary therapies that, that I can teach them how to use, um, that's really huge. Uh, so empowerment gives patients the, you know, the ability to feel like they're actually part of their own care. And uh, when you feel like you're part of your own care, you feel more in control and less stressed and you know, more likely to hopefully do better. We know that uh, studies show that patients who feel more in control tend to do better with their treatments. Mm. Yeah, I want to feel more in control. Yeah, why not? Well, so, okay, so let's pretend we all have, no, I'm not going to say it. I'm not going to say it. Let's, I am not going to say that, but I, let's say that um, all of us want the benefits of that control right now. Mm -hmm. How would we go about that? Like, what would you recommend to us? It, well, it, you know, it's, it's going to be person specific. You know, of course, it depends on exactly what things are going on. Uh, so for if you have cancer uh, and you have a specific type of cancer and we're about to do, let's just say, radiation to you, and I, I know that you're going to get tired from treatment because that, that happens. Um, you know, I'll talk to them about a variety of things that may be helpful for, you know, for fatigue. The number one thing is actually exercise, the exact opposite of what people think, you know, to do. Um, so when you're tired, you should go work harder? You actually should exercise because it's the All one right. thing that's, that reduces the... Uh, exercise thing, the, yeah, yeah. It's a miracle worker. True, drinking yeah. beer, yeah. Okay, that's okay. also a good one, too. That All reduces right, right. stress, which makes you feel better, so, yeah. It's been empty for three sips anyway. Right. So, just don't, so duels, anyhow. Just can't get another right now, so dealing with it. Um, anyways. <laughs> All right, so all right, let's, like, so we'll come to the end of our time. So let's just make sure people know where they can learn more. We're going to put links in the YouTube channel, but we're also uh, direct them to your blog, and then also um, any other kind of resources that people should follow up with you. Um, well, 21st Century Oncology is where I work here in okay. Las Vegas. So uh, anybody can find me through 21st Century Oncology, which is 702-894-5100. Okay. And I just want to put a plug in. There's amazing doctors here in town. That's one thing that I think is very important for people here in Las Vegas to realize. A lot of people end up, you know, thinking that they need to go elsewhere for amazing doctors. Yeah, where's, and where's healthcare in the world or something, right? It's, uh, yeah, I mean, I mean the bottom I line is, it, yeah, the bottom line is that, you know, there are some amazing people who are here. Uh, you know, we have doctors that are being recruited from all over, you know, all over the country, and a couple of them are actually here today as, as my guests. Uh, oh, cool, yeah. Thanks Dr. for your hard work. Dr. H.L. Greenberg and Dr. Gr J. Krishnan, who's right sitting over back there as well. Oh, very cool. Thank you for supporting. Yeah. That's great. Yeah. Okay, cool. All right, anything else? Got your, got, your, got your plug in. We know that there's good doctors somewhere in here. And where do we find? I mean, that's, that's what I wanted to ask. Yeah. How do we get? Where are the good doctors? How do you find do we, out? Yeah, like I know we have two here, but they're right. going to leave, and right. then yeah. So how do you know? Yeah. So the, right. The bottom line is, I think that if you feel that your doctor that you've gone to is like um, really amazing, or some you've asked a friend and they have a really good doctor that they like, the word of mouth is really the big okay. deal. So you ask yeah. them. And they'll tell you also, if you go to a good doctor, they'll tell you who the other good doctors are. But it's really word of mouth. Because okay. we right. have a lot you of good ones You travel in here. packs, I can see. We actually okay. do. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you very yeah. much. I appreciate you coming out. All right. Thanks. Thanks.